2017, a group of musicians assembled on a mission to recreate in its entirety the Queen Wembley concert of 1986. A lot of costumes have been tailor-made for the show. They are identical in every detail to what Queen wore on the night. Uh, it says, to Chubby, rock on, mate. <laughs> it's one month till first gig and rehearsals are already underway. I'm a racing car. in here and it wasn't me although some would argue about it Gear is set up and will stay here the entire week while rehearsals are conducted. Okay, that 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 one is wrong. It, it, it goes high notes. It goes da 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 da. So you're going da 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 da. That's what you're playing. Okay, it goes da 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 da. Hey! You put the whole thing up. No, you look great. It's, it's, it's great. I don't know. I don't really ever think about it. <laughs> it'll, it'll stay in the, in the car for the week. Bye, Katie, tomorrow.
rehearsal's finally wrapped up, tomorrow is going to be a big day. This morning, the band are going into a national TV station to talk about their tour. This isn't the first time they've appeared on TV, with them doing very well on Australia's Got Talent. Thomas, on this show we're looking for the best. That's the best impersonation I've seen of Freddie Mercury. You rock! Um, I think you're brilliant. I, I really love the song choice as well. I think you did an exceptional job um, and I know that you loved it. So that's the main thing. The lads are getting a quick bite before their big night. Wow, this is for the cube. For the cube. It's time to head to the venue. So we just did a great gig last night in Sydney. Um, where are we off today, guys? It's Canberra, isn't it? It's Canberra. Yeah, Canberra tonight. Great, okay. on this piano. Oh, which just popped up. My son of shotgun stick. This is my Freddy stick. Um, a weapon of mass destruction, I call it. And my microphone just clips in here. And I'm all ready to go. <laughs> um, this is my Telecaster that took me a long time to find. As you know, I only know three chords. <laughs> And it's out of tune as usual. It's a guitar that Status Quo used to, well, they still use. It's well known for its three chords. And I suppose it was built for a three chord song. And that's why I use it on a crazy little thing called Love. Just one song only. First off, the uh, Brian May guitar. Very accurate reproduction of Brian's guitar, produced by Brian May himself. Gets the right sounds. And on the floor, the Brian May Digitech pedal. A Dunlop wire pedal, exactly the same as Brian uses, except he uses it in a rack mount. And then just a boss pedal to do effects like uh, delays, choruses, and some of the main sounds are the main Bohemian Rhapsody sound. We use that, then you've got that classic We Will Rock You sound. And then uh, using sounds like the cascading volumes. use as Brian May does an English sixpence. Oh, okay. If you can see that, this is I think this is 1952 or something. Beep, beep, beep. Ba, ba, ba. English beep, sixpence. Beep, beep. Yeah. And that's really instrumental in uh, Brian's sound using the, the coin. 
Vox AC30s, of course. Second Brian May guitar as a backup. Or, and for drop D tuning, uh, if we're doing songs like Fat Bottom Girls. And the Chet Atkins nylon string guitar, which we perform Love of My Life. And is this world we created at the moment in the show? And that's the exact uh, same guitar as Brian uses in the Wembley concert. Let's just go through my keyboard setup. So I'm just using a basic controller here. Um, I have all the, there's actually a, a PC in here. I've got all the sounds I could possibly need. So um, let's have a, have a quick go. We got, uh, what we got here? So it's a kind of magic. <laughs> Authentic sounds straight from Wembley. And you've also got, uh, you know, your basic stuff. Who wants to, uh, who wants to live forever? And um, uh, probably the most demanding song of, of of the set. Obviously, I trigger the live the live samples there. Too. So middle bit there um, would be Radio Gaga. So you got your classic arpeggio, and then uh, when you come in properly, so yeah, it's all it's all there. A uh, lot of lot of samples triggered, a lot of sounds. Um, I use the microphone here. You can see it's plugged into the keyboard so um, I've got a little in ears. I can hear my vocals, I can hear my keyboard, I can I can mix it however yeah, I want. So you know I'm I'm very happy on stage what, what the firehouse does is up to them. And um, I don't even need this more to tell you the truth. But um, it's there anyway. Yeah so a pretty basic setup but very powerful. In in the Queen's day they would have had you know they would have bought a keyboard just for this one sound in one song. So like, you know, they would have brought a Oprah High maybe X just for this one sound. Um, I had this luxury, I have, it's all in software, it doesn't weigh anything, so, um, yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing, uh, this is, so um, obviously there's the Vakoda in Radio Gaga. Um, I could do it live, I could actually be speaking radio, but uh, it, it, it tend not to do that. So I just, I just sampled it in once and I just play it, so. And then you've got your, your we, we Will Rock You. Queen wouldn't have done this, but it, it really beefs up the drums when, when it's all playing. So. Oh, I can play it here. Yeah, thanks. The kit, um, I, I tried to get the uh, the 86 looking kit. Uh, of course, Roger played a, a um, Yamaha kit. And um, for whatever reason, no, no one knows why, he just chose the Yamaha for, for that tour. The front skin, I actually printed that, got that printed with, uh, with my printing business. Um, it is printed on the skin, uh, not, not just a, a sticker. I got the, uh, the font, I recreated it from, uh, from a photo that I could find on the internet. Seven piece kit, so I've got a 10, 12, 13 inch uh, rack tom, 16 and 18 inch um, floor toms. Roger likes using really nice deep um, snares. Mine is a seven and a half inch um, D drum uh, snare, uh, birch snare. And uh, I'm just proud to announce that, that I've, I joined the uh, Zilli family. Um, handmade Turkish boutique symbols. Um, they just arrived from Turkey last week. So again, Roger likes likes big. Uh, <laughs> he he likes his kit big, his symbols big. But um, I think I, I I've I've outdone him on this one because he had uh, 17, 18, 19 inch crash symbols, and I didn't remember correctly. So I ordered 18, 19, and 20 inch um, crash symbols. Then I went and got a uh, 22 inch ride and a uh, 22 inch china uh, so roger had uh, two chinas 
so I'll, I'll be getting another one and I think he had 20 and 22 so I'm, I'm just tossing up between getting a 20 or a 24 maybe go even bigger <laughs> um, yeah so basically this is this is my little kingdom up here um, DW9000 pedals uh, 5B sticks um, and I like everything really really loud cowbell we have to have cowbell <laughs> More cowbell. Beautiful. Big. This is a copy of John Deacon's bass. Uh, it's a 2016 American Fender. I bought it especially to copy the one that he used on the Wembley tour. So it's pretty much exactly the same as what he had, except it's got the more modern pickups. And I put it through. A very simple combo, it's a Fender, Fender Rumble 200 watts, gives me a lot of power, 80s kind of a sound. Um, I could have used other amps, could have used other guitars to, to create a better sound, a more modern sound, but the idea is to come up with an 86, 1986 kind of a sound. Um, John Deacon always had one or two plectrums, so effectively the sound is all here. Sound and lighting check is about to commence. Yeah, yeah turn, have you turned it up? Yeah, yeah, I needed it up a little bit, yes, yes. I should get my limited edition um, oh, super shit. duper. Yeah. Gabby, I will kill you. I will come and eat your heart out. A baking powder again? Everyone is happy and it's time to get ready. This is Shy Roger. <laughs> you see my shoe anywhere? <laughs> started with the greatest hits but now we're playing Queen Live 86 and we are enjoying the show very much. I, I think it's fabulous but really I'm just a pure a musical prostitute dear. <laughs> oh look, you know, we, we we do it hard. Love a bunch of guys. They do the jobs, what they're supposed to do, and it makes the difference, you know. Um, when everyone knows what they're doing comes together, and bang, we 
you've got a quaint tribute band. We can have a fun. Look, the thing I look when I when I ask people if, if they have seen Queen, they say yes, I've seen Queen 1986. That's the show we are doing. Live Wembley 1986, the Magic Tour. This, this, that's what we're doing right now. So um, we're trying to bring back the memories for those people uh, without them realizing it. You know, they, so many Queen songs and concepts and ways around. And, it's not an easy subject, you know, um, whether it's a movie, a documentary, or a simple queen set. It, it takes a lot of planning, thinking, and, and trying out. You know, you only learn from the mistakes, but we've been through all that, and, you know, we still haven't got it right. <laughs> yes, we have. Apart from that, um, it's, been, it's been fun playing with these guys over in the Eastern States. And I'm sure there's um, many more fun times to come. Uh, great shows. Hi, oh, he's back! <laughs> Hi, Ben! <laughs> Take two. <laughs> yeah, Shabazz! We're gonna have a good time tonight, aren't we? I think I've just been sacked. You know. Interview? Oh, don't be ridiculous. It's probably around my 700th gig uh, playing Brian May. And, and I uh, had a ball, it was a great time. And uh, impersonating the man is, is a wonderful, uh, wonderful job. And I wasn't really into Queen when I was a young guitarist, maybe because there was no way I could play uh, the music uh, at that time, uh, like my Led Zeppelin and uh, Black Sabbath and music like that, and I related more to that. But uh, as I get older and listen to the exquisite music that they were producing, uh, it was amazing. And to listen to the sounds, the most unique guitar sound in the world is, is Brian May and the talent pool that is the rest of the band, like Roger Taylor, amazing drummer, uh, and uh, John Deacon, most underrated bass player in the world, uh, Spike Edney, the, the, the fifth uh, almost like the fifth Beatle and uh, amazing to have all that tunnel there and of course Freddie Mercury uh, amazing and what a showman and and I don't think there's been many showmen there's certainly not that, that showman ship around uh, today as there was that someone could command a hundred thousand people like that and he was an amazing showman and he, so much of the concerts were also ad lib, and that's what we did tonight. Uh, we we did jams, and we did exactly what they uh, did off the cuff. Uh, Tom said to me, "Let's have a jam," and I just looked at him. It's never happened before in the shows I've been doing the last few years. With Tom. Uh, and it was great, and the people loved it. So I first got into these Queen shows. Um, it's actually the guitarist Anthony that rang me. And he said, oh, I saw your ad in the paper, keyboard player, and um, I wondered if you're interested. And I said, look, I'm actually in a band now, in a Bon, bon Jovi tribute, very happy. But um, I said, well, out of interest, what, what, is, what is the show? What, what are you looking for? And as soon as he said Queen, I was like, yeah, I'll cancel everything. I, I want to do this because... I've, I've always liked Queen. I've been in quite a lot of cover bands, and every time we've done Queen songs, they've always worked. Um, I've been in two bands that have done Bohemian Rhapsody, and people would come to those shows just to hear that song. Um, so the idea of doing a whole whole show, just Queen songs, was just great. I mean, it's great for keyboard player, um, probably 50% piano. There's a lot of 80 sounds, lots of layers. My parents actually went to Wembley in 86. I remember that night, um, I had a babysitter. I, would, I don't know how old I was. <laughs> uh, I don't know, nine or something. And um, yeah, my mum and dad, they were going off to this Wembley concert, concert and they were going on about it. And I was like, what's the big deal? It's some band. And they came back, they had the scarf. I still got, still got it to this day. And um, 
I would have given anything to be at that concert because um, I've said a few times, in my opinion, that is the best rock concert ever. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that there was a fifth member to Queen. Um, he was actually like the unofficial fifth member. His name was Spike Edney. And he decided on the night of um, the Wembley concert to wear a pink, pink muscle top with, uh, with white suspenders and white pants. And um, so that's all I have to wear. And uh, it's not the most flattering outfit. Um, what is interesting is there's actually a Spike Edney video of him you know, on stage at Soundcheck going through his keyboard setup. I think he's using a core. Or Triton, or it might be the next one up. And um, he, he actually does it exactly the same as I did. Like he splits the keyboard up the same way, he in the same sort of arrangement. He uses the same type of sounds. And it's just funny that you know we, I, there was no communication between me and Spike. But we just came up with the same thing. Uh, I've been a Queen fan since uh, 1978 when I was eight years old. And uh, why, why I love this, this whole thing is because um, it reminds me of, of my dad. We just gave concerts to mom, um, to the point where mom got that annoyed that she returned the album. <laughs> and there was no more queen for me in the house. So, um, but I loved it. Then, then uh, 84, um, jumping to, uh, forward to 84, Radio Gaga came on and uh, watched, the, watched the clip. Um, it, was, it was just amazing. Um, then I moved from Hungary to, to Australia, uh, met a bunch of guys. Apparently my haircut got me in, so that's good. And, uh, uh, and, and, and it was uh, amazing. Um, in the meantime, 1992, my son was born um, and I named him Freddie after Freddie Mercury. Yeah, the very first time I saw this, this Queen tribute band, you see, I, I, I never, never touched Queen's music. I was just too scared of it. It was just too, too much respect. And then I said, nah, I, I just can't touch it. Never learned the Queen song. And then I went to see this tribute band. I, ne I never heard of tribute bands. And then in my local, there was this Queen tribute band. And um, yeah, at the end of the show, I, I walked up to the singer and I said, "Look, this this is your, your band is actually my band. I will become your drummer. And uh, if uh, if a truck happens to run your drummer over, you know who to call." And um, and sure enough, I, I actually did become. That was the first Queen band that I joined. And now I'm with these um, these guys, which. Uh, Three of them, Ben and Anthony, sorry, three of us, Ben, Anthony and myself, we've been playing oh, about a decade now together. And uh, we joined um, Tom, Thomas Crane from WA. Amazing. I mean, the guy, the guy sounds like Freddie, you know, like, it's, it's yeah. And plays the piano, plays the guitar. He's, He's a, he's a true true musician and an entertainer. And then Mez joined the band uh, this year and, and we've, got the, uh, we've got the right band together. We've got the chemistry. We have so much fun on stage. Uh, uh, lots of things happen. My drums fall to pieces and uh, Mez catching it with his shoulder and, 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 and all that sort of stuff. Uh, um, me signaling to Ben that, yeah, let's go with something. And then uh, Ben goes, okay. And he goes, and I don't. And <laughs> so it's just, it's, it's live. It's, it's great. Uh, 2016 was the 40th anniversary of the song Bohemian Rhapsody. That was the song that when it was played in 1976 and it first came out on the radio, it turned me on to music. It turned me on to playing guitar. And I started playing. And a few years later, I ended up playing guitar in the year 12 formal for my school, big production there. And here I am, a few years later, playing bass in uh, a Queen tribute band. Absolutely enjoying it. Um, I'm the last member to join this band, and um, some say I was the missing link, gone AWOL. Um, as it turns out, I've got Deaconish kind of hair, Deaconish kind of nose, Deaconish kind of a look. And fortunately enough, I can play enough of the bass to um, mimic John Deacon. 
Um, this is an unbelievable band because of the songs that they play, thanks to Queen and the legacy they've left. On top of that, the guys are incredible, love touring with them. And I couldn't hope to be in a tribute band that plays the songs that I like as much as I, I do from Queen. The show might be over, but there are hundreds of people waiting outside for signed autographs and photos. Good evening, all you beautiful people. Freddie's back in town and it's time to rock. I've watched that CD a thousand times and that was a complete... Leave me there, he's watched the DVD. You <laughs> said <laughs> complete immaculate instruction of the same scene. It was amazing. We loved it. Thank you so much, yeah. mate. You. We loved yeah, it. Yeah. It's awesome. Would you mind taking it? Can I get a photo with Spike Edney? I'm sorry. Thank you. gonna be tonight when it's too late. I'm ashamed you don't. I'm ashamed you won't. I'm telling you how much I love this song. First time I've been to a concert where I literally knew every so single you, song. So you knew the, uh, the... Seven Days of Rye? About that, all the yeah. talking events and all that in oh, between. I was literally waiting for you to start yeah. up and you were there 100%. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I love like, 100, like another one bites the dust and yeah, yeah we'll be together till we freaking yeah, die. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're there 100%. You know the song yeah. thing that was? Yeah, I, I knew you knew every single freaking word. It was ridiculous. <laughs> no, that's I what just, it's all about, man. Yeah. You got it. See you love you. Over 26 gigs were performed around Australia this tour, including Perth, Sydney and Canberra. But the guys have even bigger plans for next year. Genesis Entertainment proudly presents The King and the Queen, starring two of Australia's leading Elvis Presley and Freddie Mercury tribute artists. A full production show backed by live musicians. Sean Luke Spiteri as Elvis Presley and Thomas Crane as Freddie Mercury. Thomas Crane will blow you away with his strong and uncanny Freddie Mercury voice. He has had much success in Australia, overseas and is an internet sensation. Experience all the songs, the atmosphere, the costumes, the moves, the euphoria that was Queen at the height of their popularity. Sean Luke Spiteri is a multi-award winning Elvis tribute artist. His performances have taken him all over Australia to Memphis, Tennessee, Elvis Presley's hometown. Sean Luke Spiteri has captured the true essence and persona with the look, the voice and the authentic wardrobe together with the sharpest and closest electrifying Elvis moves in the country. This dynamic production will bring together two of the world's biggest voices and most electrifying live entertainers that the world has ever seen. An authentic live concert featuring all the hits from Bohemian Rhapsody, Somebody to Love, to Suspicious Minds, to an American Trilogy and much more. Don't miss this royal authentic concert, a tribute to the greatest pioneers in music history. The King and the Queen. Royalty is in the building. The King and the Queen. Tickets on sale now. Brought to you by Genesis Entertainment. Sometimes I get a feeling I was back in the old days Long ago When we were kids, when we were young They seemed so perfect 